I have been gifted a new project. Thanks, Dave. Uh, this is a PM Research Model 5 Coke bottle engine. It's quite an old kit. Uh, it was uh, rescued from a garage clear out a number of years ago, and it's missing a bunch of parts. Uh, the original owner appears to have finished the conrod quite well, and the internal bore is still undersized, so it can be reamed up to size. So that that's a keeper. Um, the crankshaft is a bit iffy. Uh, the special thing about this uh, particular kit is this has bronze castings for the main casting and the base. These are now cast iron and aluminum, respectively. The bronze casting has these parts uh, molded in, these bosses, but on the cast iron uh, they are separate casting. This is because they are bearing surfaces. This is called a Coke bottle engine because it's shaped like a Coke bottle, which is kind of cool. Some initial deburring of the casting is required. This outer face is going to be held in the three-jaw chuck and used as a rough uh, reference for the initial turning, as is the, in the internal hole here, which is going to be cleaned up to half inch with a twist drill, just loosely by hand. Uh, we're not going to bother about the bottom, but we are going to take off this boss at the side, probably with the angle grinder. Uh, here it is cleaned up uh, with uh, angle grinder and files and uh, the end hole has been cleaned up as well. Start with a touch off and a facing cut. Uh, this is just with the MPG. Uh, most of the machining video here has been speeded up five times and the gaps have been taken out. Here we verify we have a good length uh, in the chuck and doing some initial turning to just set my tool length. And that goes into the CNC to set the uh, tool one position. Started off with the tool one uh, in the other side of the tool post, which uh, messes up my offset. Uh, these uh, fa uh, turning passes, I guess, not facing passes, are a uh, short routine that I have for this kind of thing, which takes me back to the starting point for each pass. So it just turns in, comes out, uh, rapids back to the beginning, and then uh, it goes back to the initial initial point and that allows me to measure what I've done and reset the DRO or the tool setting as necessary as I go. Much as you do with a manual uh, machine. And here I'm bringing it down to uh, 0.75. We're starting with uh, 7 8 material here. And we're just bringing down this end to um, 0.65 I think which is 5 eighths. Correct me on that later. Yes, Luke, we're coming down to 0.65. Isn't that a good idea? Because that's 5 eighths. Really it is. Now turning down the end to a half inch approximately to fit, nice press fit in the end of our part. So this takes a few attempts together. If you're enjoying this content, there is a like button you can click. There's also a subscribe button if you really like it. And if you don't like it, why are you still here? Um, you could click the bell button because you must be a masochist because you're still watching. After several attempts, we have a nice push fit. But that doesn't fit. That doesn't fit. It's supposed to fit. It's supposed to be 5 eighths. Wait a minute. 5 eighths is 625. No, 65. Grr. Okay, now it fits um, with a little bit of persuasion. There we go. As this is suspended by just that short stub at the end, it has a little bit of wiggle, which is what we want. Now we're marking out for a cross hole for a uh, M5. A hole because I have M5 screws and this is, doesn't have to be in any particular spot it just has to be able to support these clamps. I got lucky here because the tap was just long enough to go all the way through to give me a thread at the other side because we need to screw in from both sides into this hole. Uh, this video is not sponsored. I did buy the missing parts from PM Research and they provided me uh, the design of this mandrel. I recommend if you're building this kit, ask them about it. 
uh, securing this uh, with a couple of plates and M5 cap screws, uh, one on each side, just doing finger tight just now so we have some uh, adjustment. This footage is sped up 10 times because this is the slow process to get this lined up. First we line up the two screws at either side, much as you would do in a four jaw chuck. And then I go over to the other two faces and I would bump this. It turned out it was already centered, so we're good. We're just making it look symmetrical at the moment because we don't have a reference center. And now we face off the, uh, the end once we've tightened it up. There are actually time gaps between these passes. I just uh, clipped that out because it's, there's so many of them. This is supposed to be the finishing pass. It's a uh, much lower uh, feed and depth of cut, but it didn't come out looking the way I wanted. There's a bit of unevenness on the surface there, and this is because my z-axis isn't locked, it, I found it tends to fight with the CNC. Uh, I came back and figured out a way to get the table locked without it fighting with the CNC and did that again uh, the next day, and it came out. Mm, shiny. <laughs>